Now we review. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Now we review the 2024 film Boy Kills World. Proof positive that Hollywood has been watching anime and doing LSD again, again Hollywood, again. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I am Richard. This is Random Street Theater, and I have just seen Boy Kills World. Well. Most of it. I mean, I did fall asleep during part of it, but I did see it. And you have a Skarsgård with an internal monologue that sounds like H. John Benjamin, who is the guy that voices Archer. In fact, he has basically Archer in his head, speaking for him, portraying to the audience his thoughts. And he is uh, deaf mute and his family was supposedly murdered by this uh, rich aristocracy that control the city and he is uh, being trained to go on a revenge quest to go kill the people that killed his family very basic uh, I mean the the Japanese anime influence on this not only in the fighting fight choreography and the costuming are very clear these are not necessarily bad things but but do do understand that the japanese japanese films of this nature are known for having a very solid use of color you know when, when we look at um like kill bill had the the one chick wearing that that i think it was a yellow suit and it's like that's something straight from an anime so you could tell who the hero was because he wore that color and everything was associated with him. And it's like, yeah, you've got a bunch of people flying around. They're all in uniform, and you, you can't tell who they are. So you've got, in this particular film, you've got the hero is flying around in red. The bad guys tend to be flying around in yellow. And so on and so forth. Before I get any further into that, let me remind you that for every thousand subscribers I get, I do purchase one of these bracelets from the company 4Ocean. 4Ocean pulls a pound of trash out of the ocean every time I do that. Be so kind as to comment, like, and subscribe. You'll be doing your part for a better world. Anyway, so... What's going on here? Yes. Every year they have a, a event where the enemies of the aristocracy are rounded up. Twelve of them are rounded up. And they're killed for the amusement. It's a very Hunger Games-esque sort of a very um, Battle Royale, really. Hunger Games bit it off Battle Royale, I think. Killed for amusement. Although, you know, in, in, the, in the the Battle Royale version, it's just because they're evil and they want ratings. I mean, it's not, oh, we don't have enough people, it's for more food. It's like, no, we're going to randomly round up a bunch of people, make them kill each other. Just because we're like that, Oh, and, and we're going to sexually assault any person that gets in our way. You know, that's, that's, I mean, I have somewhere, I found it, I think, in a recycling bin. It was a recycling bin full of books one day, and I was, I took a bunch of them, and one of them was the first issue of Battle Royale. And I read it, and I was like, ugh, this is just dismal and upsetting. But that's often what anime is, you know. The Japanese culture, particularly coming, what I know of it, coming from World War II, had this very bleak outlook on life. You know, soldiers, instead of surrendering, they would they would commit suicide. And if you were wounded, your commanding officer would often order you to be executed because they didn't want the enemy getting a hold of you. And, you know, it was felt you had no further value. So human life in, in much of this media has this extremely low value and it, it lends itself very well to a single hero moving through this this group of people group of bad guys and just tearing the heck out of them and one of the things i do have to point out to you in real life is that you know just because somebody is a bad guy doesn't mean they don't have a family and i mean we saw this in iraq there were a lot of people who supported the terrorists not because they were bad people but because they needed a job you know they need to feed their family and it's like yes you're doing a despicable thing for feeding your family but the alternative is you watch your family starve to death so in this particular world where 
you know, you need hired goons, and those goons have a family. That's how you control people. So if you look at this as a serious movie, which it is not, it is absolutely terrible and horrifying, and the hero is not much of a hero. If you look at this as a comedy, well, I didn't laugh once. And, I mean, the action sequences are awesome. They really are. But I've seen awesome action sequences so much lately that I'm, I'm just anesthetized to them. I, I, it's very hard for me to see an action sequence with forgettable uh, enemies who I don't, don't have any relation to, who I don't have any feeling for, getting blown the heck up. I mean, that's one of those... It downgrades it to me because it's so generic. And then, um, in the end, I don't want to spoil the ending, but it reminds me of the reboot of Nightmare on Elm Street in terms of... What? How did... What? What? No, there's, there's this giant hole in the plot that makes everything work. So, yeah. I mean, spoiling it is not a, not a good idea. But just, just understand that there's a lot of movies got a movie. There are a lot of moving parts. And the best way to see this movie would probably be a little on the enhanced side so all the cool stuff looks cooler. And definitely not when you're um, sleepy. Because... I could not stay awake during much of this movie. That could be why I dislike it so much. But that could be it. So yeah, Boy Kills World, for me, it, it is a movie. It is a popcorn film. You turn your head off. You watch the movie. You forget about it the next day. It It's smack dab in the middle of your watch list. If you have a desire to watch a film with a lot of action, reasonably cool dialogue, but not a lot of substance to it, not, nothing to take away from it. Well, I mean, almost every film has something you can take away from it. In, in this film, if you wanted to, to really break it down, you could take away from it. Don't assume anything is true just because someone has been telling it to you your whole life. That is the message of this film. But it is still very much a background segment in a film that is barely holding itself together. And yeah, that's why this film, for me, it goes in the middle of your watch list. I know everybody else loves this film. Maybe it's because I was tired. Maybe it was because uh, it's just not a kind of thing that appeals to me. Violence is losing its luster in my old age. But that's just my opinion. And I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. I'm Richard. Greetings, humans! It's your old pal Randall the Rat again, and I'm taking a break from eating your delicious face to remind you to comment, like, and subscribe. And why should you do that? Well, for one thing, see this bling here? That, 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 awesome, isn't it? Yeah, got a dragon on it. This is what you get if you go to the Conqueror and start the Great Wall of China Challenge. Yeah! Walk long enough, bike long enough, you can plant five trees and get this awesome necklace, which the owner of this channel, Richard, has done for you. Because he wanted to plant five trees and get an awesome necklace. And for every thousand subscribers he gets, he also buys a bracelet from 4Ocean. And they pull a pound of trash out of the ocean. So the more money he has, the more of these challenges he buys from the Conqueror. And the more trees he plants for you. So if you comment, you like, and subscribe, you can buy, buy more bracelets, pull more trash out of the ocean, and plant more trees. Isn't that awesome? Shouldn't you be doing that then? Be smart. Click, click that like button, or I'll eat you. Might eat you anyway. You look delicious.